Hello and welcome to another foodoffensive.com video broadcast. This week is just going to be an audio version with showing you all of the links and the articles that I'm referring to as I as I point them out and also a couple of video clips referring uh, to this week's special report. Uh, this week we're going to talk about genetically modified cotton and BT cotton and uh, specifically uh, the effects that it has in India right now. So uh, normally I give you a update with a news current news articles and then we go into the special report but I've decided that these videos have been uh, getting too long and so for for the time being I'm not going to be giving uh, news articles in this format we might do separate videos or just do them on the website as posts on foodoffensive.com or they will be part of a new thing that I'm going to be trying out and do little daily um, audio news stories and this is, uh, of course, in an attempt to shorten the videos for uh, those that are uh, ADD or those of us that are too busy working to pay our taxes here in America. They don't have the time to spend to watch the 30-minute video. We're going to try to shorten it up a little bit. But this week, like I said, no, no food news, but we will do the eighth installment that I've been doing on a series of special reports on GMO, except for a couple of weeks where we did a, a Valentine's Day special, we did a Super Bowl special, and... Uh, we just did the Fukushima special last week. I uh, did a little thing for that for the anniversary, talking about the food and uh, the fallout and uh, health risks associated with that and the effects on the food that that has had, the, the nuclear disaster there. But getting into this week's special report, we're going to talk about genetically modified cotton. And as always, uh, what is genetically modified organism, G GMO? It's an organism whose genetic material has been altered using genetic engineering techniques. I'm going to jump right in here with an article uh, referring to a major issue that has uh, been a problem in India and it's it's really a social injustice thing with, with this particular genetic, genetically modified crop variety um, because it has resulted in a rising amount of farmer suicides in India and uh, they're blaming it on the GM cotton, BT cotton crops failing. And uh, this article is from uh, responsibletechnology.org, Jeffrey M. Smith. The, he does a little article called Spilling the Beans, and this particular one goes through and it points out uh, several different articles and takes a few quotes from those articles, and you'll see those on the screen as they, as they come up as I'm reading them here, and then uh, we'll continue on after that. But the article says, The record suicide rate among farmers in India continues to rise with one farmer now committing suicide every 30 minutes. Many media reports blame failed GMBT cotton crops for this crisis. More than a quarter of a million farmers have killed themselves in the last 16 years in what is the largest recorded wave of suicides in history. An article for Sky News reports that one farmer who committed suicide had been, uh, quote, had been persuaded to use genetically modified seeds by the possibility of a better harvest. What he wasn't told was that they needed more rain than the region provided. There's a little bit of information left out there. Uh, not good. And then it goes on, farmers who grow GM crops also have to borrow money for expensive pesticides and fertilizers. When the crop fails, they cannot repay their debts. The article comments, quote, Ac across rural India, there is now widespread despair. The fields are also filling up with widows. And then, uh, of course, as it referred to this uh, article from uh, Sky. It's news.sky.com, and uh, you can see the article and the address on the screen. You'll also, as always, be able to see it in the info section, the comment section of this uh, video that you're watching. But I'm going to show you a clip right now, and it's referring to those widows there out in the fields now picking the cotton alone. And this is that clip right now. It is a time of despair for hundreds of thousands of farmers. At this cotton auction, prices are low and they keep falling. Bagwan Rao has only received a few hundred pounds for his crop. He tells me he's taking on a lot of debt just to buy next year's seeds. Across India, farmers are struggling to keep up with a country driving forwards at a rapid pace. 
Kamala Sertam is now a widow. Her husband is one of many farmers who've given up and committed suicide. Our husbands commit suicide out of desperation and the widows have to bear the burden of feeding and clothing and educating the children and living this hard life. Suicides have to be stopped, otherwise we will all be widows out here. A few miles away in another village and the cremation of another suicide farmer is taking place. It is a different widow, but a familiar story. More than a quarter of a million farmers have killed themselves in the last 16 years in India. That's one every 30 minutes. It is the largest wave of recorded suicides in history. The problems facing India's farmers are complex, but there are simple answers. Global trade has driven down prices and farmers who've moved away from food to cash crops like cotton are suffering. This is where the cotton is brought after it's been picked from the fields. Now, this produce is being taken away to factories where it will be made into clothing. Much of that clothing, of course, will be exported to Western markets. But due to record low prices, the farmers are only getting, on average, about 300 to 350 pounds a year for their entire season's work. And after they've bought new seeds, pesticides and fertilizers for next year's crops, it leaves barely enough to survive. The prospect of getting away from a hand-to-mouth lifestyle is seductive, but it's also deadly. So this is the cotton that he harvested to take to market before he died. Rao Ban shows me his nephew's entire harvest. A day after picking this, he killed himself by drinking pesticides. He tells me his relative had borrowed money for hybrid cotton seeds, but they were unsuitable for the climate. Outside, his wife clutches a photo. It was taken just after they were married. She'll now have to pay back the moneylenders and bring up their children on her own. India has one of the fastest growing economies in the world, but away from the cities, there are few signs of progress. The number of suicides, activists say, is a symptom of a wider problem. The government is leaving the old India of the countryside to die. Alex Rossi, Sky News, Maharashtra. Well, moving right along, the article goes on. BT cotton was first released for commercial growing in India in 2002, and the data on farm suicides show clearly that the last eight years were much worse than the preceding eight, which is alarming since the total number of farmers is declining. And that's uh, from the Hindu.com. It's a, a new site. And you can see the article there. Also, India's BT cotton, quote, revolution has lost its sheen over the last five years, with government data showing a consistent decline in cotton yield, even as the area under BT has grown to 93% of the total area under the cash crop. The overall yield is expected or estimated to decline to a five-year low this year. And that article's from the businessstandard.com, uh, five-year low. Cotton yield may fall to five-year low. And also, I would like to point out, this isn't, this isn't in uh, Jeffrey M. Smith's original article, but I wanted to point out from that particular article on the businessstandard.com, something that I, I read and wanted to point out. It says, according to a senior official of the cotton development and Research Association, the CDRA, of the Confederation of Indian Textile Industry, the overall yield this year may be less than last year's yield of 475 kilograms per, per hectare. Because of unfavorable climatic conditions in some of the northern and central states. Well, according to what the a previous article said, these farmers weren't, weren't told that these particular GM seeds were not even possible to grow because of the um, it doesn't have enough rain in that region that they have it's not just like an unseasonable rain or not as much rain as normal but it just doesn't have enough at all period so and you can see the chart here showing the uh, the yield falling over the years 
And there's also a further study that I found uh, from the University of California in San Diego talking about the different aspects of BT cotton and it tends to favor uh, the, the GM BT cotton but I had picked out a couple things here I wanted to point out from that and you can see it at their website as well but uh, one of their uh, headings was increased yield and it says BT cotton planted from 1996 to 1998 is estimated to have yielded 5% more on average than if traditional cotton would have been planted I mean that's it you know, only 5% more. Um, and we'll look at some of the uh, health effects here in a second. And I don't, I don't really think that the, the health effects and the, the, the negative aspects of this are worth that 5%. And then also, of course, any time that you increase the yield of a product, um, the price goes down because there's more supply than demand. So um, the other title that they have or the other little section of their article or their study says price effect. And it says it's estimated that prices are uh, 0.8 cents a pound lower from increased production due to the BT technology. And there's a spray comparison chart as well showing that uh, the effects of the spring. Now moving on with the responsibletechnology.org article, uh, Spilling the Beans, and then its referenced articles that are within that article. It says... Farmers and activists who oppose GM crops argue that none of the promises made during the introduction of GM seeds have come true. In certain cases, the opposite has happened. Some farmers report that crops failed to flower, producing no yield at all. Others report low yields and high cost of GM seed and chemical insecticides, which farmers still have to spray in spite of marketing claims that BT cotton reduces or eliminates the need for them. So another lie that they're told that they would decrease these insecticides, but in, in fact they still have to spray. So, And then article goes on, as for GM proponents' claims that if GM seeds were so bad, farmers wouldn't buy them. It's clear that the consolidation in the seed market means that GM seeds are all that's available. That's the only option they have, apparently. And uh, ibnlive.in.com has uh, that reference there. Uh, title BT cotton fails farmers in state now there's three other we're gonna leave that article there and, and, and move on there's three other main issues discovered that uh, about genetically engineered cotton that I want to point out the first uh, main issue is as a food crops such as BT cotton produce pesticides inside their inside the plant this kills or deters insects, saving the farmer from having to spray pesticides. But the plants themselves are toxic and not just to insects. Farmers in India who let their sheep graze on the BT cotton plants after the harvest saw thousands of sheep actually die. So it's also an effect on the animals that are eating the crop. And also it goes on too, thousands of sheep, buffalo, and goats in India died after grazing on BT cotton plants after the harvest. Others suffered poor health and reproductive problems. And that's in a, an article from gmwatch.org talking about the effects on the, on the animals after they eat it. Another uh, point we want to make about a uh, main issue surrounding the genetically engineered or genetically modified cotton is that farm workers uh, talking about on the skin, like our actual human skin, uh, and it's also affecting farmers, particularly in India. Uh, farm workers throughout India are getting the same allergic reactions from handling BT cotton as those who reacted to the BT spray. So you can see pictures um, of their skin breaking out and things like that from, from picking the picking the, the cotton and and then also I want to look at the environmental effects and uh, relating to the cross-pollination of, of genetically modified crops. It's another issue that's um, surrounding GMOs and it affects cotton as well. And it's, it's the fact that pollen from GM crops can contaminate nearby crops of the same type except for um, except for soy, which does not cross-pollinate. But in fact, virtually all heritage varieties of corn in Mexico, which is the origin of all corn, have been found to have some contamination. 
and then it goes on to say that canola and cotton also cross pollinate so as we looked at in the last GMO special report with canola that it, it actually infects farmers that are trying to grow their own heirloom seeds and their own um, their own seeds the natural seeds that, that the they're being contaminated by their neighbors that are growing GM canola so that's the same thing with with cotton it's it's a environmental concern because it's affecting the natural crops that we their people are actually trying to grow the natural stuff and it's affecting those so that's a big problem but there's some good news on on the India front concerning the cotton the GM cotton and that comes from from several articles of reporting on it and this is very recent this particular one is from March 6 2012 so very recent it's titled uh, agricultural Punjab rebuffs Monsanto attempt to sell BT cotton seed to farmers so they're saying take this Punjab and shove it when it comes to uh, growing BT corn in in that region of India and it says the US agrochemical giant wanted legal protection for its intellectual property provincial government unwilling to comply this is uh, an article, like I said, from March 6, uh, by Zafar, Zafar Buddha. And uh, it says, Islamabad, the Punjab government has refused to agree to U.S. agrochemical giant Monsanto's demands for intellectual property rights protection for its BT cotton seeds and has accused the company of a, quote, monopolistic plan to take over agriculture in Punjab, well, it's probably what they want to do is to take over. And another little s sentence here I want to point out in the article, it says, The Punjab government, however, is up in arms at this proposal, effectively calling it a conspiracy to make Punjab's agricultural sector dependent on Monsanto. And I'd like to add, well, of course, I mean, that hasn't this happened already in the U.S. and, and elsewhere? I mean, they're smart by uh, looking at at the effects that it's had in other areas and saying no and not even letting it in there in the first place so they're very very intelligent and they know what's going on i think so uh that's really what's happened here in the u.s it's it's a it's a monopoly and um it makes us dependent on monsanto the seeds don't uh, they're terminator seeds they don't they're not able to be used again uh so the farmers are forced to buy the seed new every year from monsanto it sounds like a great business plan to me for making money but not moral and not not appropriate I don't think now I'm gonna move on here and show you a clip like I said a second clip uh, this is from the docu documentary unnatural selection and it's from the GMO trilogy which uh, was put out by Jeffrey M Smith and it's uh, also going on to talk about the suicides in India and the effect that it has had and you can actually see them talk about it right now. Globalization has enabled the Maltese to gain control over seeds in the so-called third world. The Asian market is to be developed with genetically modified cotton. However, the chemical corporations are meeting with unexpected resistance. The second way in which biodiversity of our seeds, our medicinal plants, our other useful species is taking place is through genetic engineering. And genetic engineering is a false promise whose high price has already been paid by the farmers of this country. Multinationals have grabbed the seed economy, which used to be a farmer's economy, it used to be a women's economy, and now are bringing unreliable, untested seeds to the market, pushing our farmers to suicide. We happen to be sitting in the middle of all the seed industry shops right here. Monsanto this side, Syngenta shops that side. The next lane is all selling seeds of suicide. Monsanto. 
Vandana Shiva, with a PhD in physics and winner of the alternative Nobel Prize, has dedicated herself to small Indian farmers and the preservation of biodiversity for almost 20 years. In the meantime, she has become a formidable and loathed opponent of internationally operating agrochemical groups, such as Monsanto, Syngenta, Conagra, Cargill, Bayer and others. Cotton farmers from central India are demonstrating angrily in front of the branch offices of large multinational agrochemical groups. Many of them are on the verge of ruin due to BT cotton, genetically modified cotton from Monsanto, first approved in 2002, which rendered them a disastrous crop. Just as with the introduction of chemicals in farming, they now fear they will run into debt, the only escape from which is suicide. In the last few years, thousands of farmers have committed suicide. Others try desperately to pay off their debts by selling a kidney. The US corporation Monsanto, that had acquired the old established Indian seed company Mahaiko, promised that the new genetically modified cotton plants would produce higher yields and ensure better quality. Thanks to gene manipulation, the use of pesticides could be reduced as the plants produced their own insecticide. Expecting higher crop yields, the farmers were persuaded to purchase Monsanto seeds at quadruple the price. They took out loans with banks and seed dealers at enormously high interest rates. Yet the anticipated bumper crop failed to materialize. Diseases and insect-ridden plants forced the farmers to use more of the expensive chemicals. Their expenditures rose, driving their bank debts higher at the same time. This had not been mentioned by the video cassettes distributed freely all over India, promoting Monsanto's genetically modified cotton, the Bolgard cotton. They only promised the farmers happiness and prosperity. The plant is uh, embossed with uh, all sorts of disease like uh, trips, aphids and uh, jessets. So there are you see, many bowls which are falling down before it becomes, uh, before it be yields the cotton. Uh, the price of 16, this is uh, 1600 rupees. Mamul raka like Mamul raka like that. I have nine hundred rupees. Nine hundred. So that's a four hundred. Other varieties, you know, that is four hundred rupees. Three fifty to four hundred rupees. This is bollworm. Attack of bollworm. Titrinations. So what the company claims, this is varieties resistant to bollworms. This is bollworm. Bollworm in the bollgard cotton. That's a BT cotton. Since he owes uh, money to the bank, they will not give you in the near future. No, he has uh, the the smaller, the, no, smaller now he's farmer. left with two options. One is to sell away a, a part of his uh, property and clear the debts, or consume uh, poison and uh, take poison and commit suicide. He has left only, he has two alternatives either commit suicide or uh, repay by selling away or disposing the property. The saddest thing for me is that every failure from the perspective of a poor peasant and a small farmer in this country is not a failure 
from the perspective of these companies. I, in fact, traveled with one of them about two decades ago. And they said to us, it doesn't matter if the crops don't do well, it's all right, they'll come back for more of our seeds. The farmer gets wiped out, the land gets wiped out, the company's markets grow. And that, I think, is the real tragedy of genetic engineering, that the failure of agriculture is a market success for the corporations. An interview with Mahaiko Monsanto India on the topic of crop yields did not take place. The speaker for Monsanto Europe mailed the following statement. We emphatically repudiate any current allegation to the effect that, in particular, genetically modified cotton grades have caused bad harvests, assessing this to be a failure of technology in India. Any further interviews with Monsanto Europe and America were refused by headquarters. As you can see, this is a, a terrible a uh, terrible effect, a terrible uh, injustice to the people of India and to others around the world that are forced to grow this genetically modified crops. Uh, cotton is grown all over, but it's it's been a it's been a big deal in India concerning the uh, suicide rates and the things that are happening there. With these farmers are having to take out loans for uh, seed and and still having to spray and do all that, but then when the crop fails they have nothing there's there's no it's not like in america where farmers are sometimes subsidized by the government or they have insurances that actually pay and actually guarantee them a certain amount of crop per year no matter what well they don't obviously they don't have that in india you you produce you get what you you know you get paid for what you produce and so when they have no crop or or little crop then how do they pay their bills uh, for even buying the seeds that were promised to give them more yield? So it's it's a very terrible situation, and you can see the effect that it has had on on the people there. Now we're uh, somewhat nearing the end of our our long series here that we've been doing on genetically modified organisms, and uh, we are down to a couple more. A couple more crops. We're going to look at genetically modified peanuts. We're going to look at um, genetically modified fish, especially salmon and the chimera salmon that that they're that they're producing and using in the farm raised varieties. And so we're going to look into that. I'm not sure which one next, but we'll get to that next week and continue on from there. But I would like to thank you for joining me. I have a podcast as well that uh, covers. This video that you might be watching the video or if you're listening to the audio, more than likely that's where you received it is from the podcast. I do an audio only version and trying to get caught up on the past episodes and, and get those updated so you're able to listen to just listen to them. And you can go back later and look at the uh, articles and the links to the articles and see the proof of that stuff. But uh, again, thank you for joining me. I post headlines on uh, foodoffensive.com and, and stuff that's coming up and all of that. But this has been a foodoffensive.com weekly video broadcast coming at you from the front lines of our food supply. Thank you for joining me.